Peace. This is Wise for Wise Words Media. And fight fans, buckle up. It's on. Wow. What a week it's been for big boxing announcements. The two biggest fights in both hemispheres were both announced within this week. First, in the Eastern Hemisphere, over across the pond in the UK, the biggest fight that could be made over there was announced when uh, Team Joshua agreed to the terms that Team Fury sent over and they agreed to fight later this year in December. And yesterday, late yesterday evening, we got the breaking news that the biggest fight that could be made over here in the Western Hemisphere, and not only over here, but the biggest fight that could be made in boxing today, this is the fight of the decade. This is the generational battle right here, this one. This is the holy war between Terrence, Bud Crawford, and Errol the Truth Spence. Both of them will take the ring and go up against one another on November 19th, 2022. This is going to be a huge fight with historic implications. These are the between the two of them, they hold all four major belts. So this is a yet another one of those fights for Undisputed. And it's only fitting because the man that made Undisputed cool again is in this fight, and that's Terrence Crawford. You know, nobody was sweating or, or trying to be Undisputed up until Terrence Crawford did it in 2017. After that, that became the thing to do. That became the cool thing to do because nobody was chasing that or going after that since Bernard Hopkins did it 13 years prior to that. So, huge, huge, um, huge news. As far as whatever was uh, reported through Dan Raphael and ESPN, um, some of the details were already established. The lion's share of the money of the gate goes to, our, or excuse me, of the purse. The majority of the money split goes to Earl Spence. Crawford agreed to that. He was fine with that. I um, believe there was also a rematch clause for Earl Spence. Or, or maybe for both men. But, you know, the details are there. You can look them up um, on ESPN. And, yes, it's, it's official. It's about to go down, finally. See, this news right here comes at a perfect time. Why? Because it comes on a week that Canelo's fighting and it comes off the heels of Canelo saying that he will not fight Surdo Ramirez if Surdo beats Bivol because he doesn't fight Mexicans. He doesn't fight his fellow countrymen. You see, now with Errol Spence, American, Terrence Crawford, American, Errol Spence, one of the two best, top two, in his division. Terrence Crawford, one of the two best in his division. Both the top two in their division, both hold all the belts. And this, and they can use the Canelo excuse. They can say, oh no, he's, he's American. I'm not gonna fight him. He's an American, like me. So I gotta, I gotta root and support for him because he's American. No, that doesn't happen in boxing. You see, Canelo is taking you Canelo fans for a ride. He is walking you guys through a land of illusion where you guys are falling for this. You're falling for the banana in the tailpipe. He's got the wool over your eyes because he's telling you, oh yeah, yeah, it's because he's Mexican. He's a countryman and I, I, you know, I don't wanna fight my countrymen. What Mexican fighter has ever said that? What Mexican boxers have ever done that? One of the greatest trilogies in boxing history comes from two Mexicans, Barrera and um, Morales, when, when they got together. You know, the passing of the torch fight. 
when the greatest Mexican champion of all time, a Gran Campeón Mexicano, Julio Cesar Chavez, took on the upcoming, the upstart, Oscar De La Hoya. That's Mexico, Mexico. You know, Canelo didn't have this Mexico, oh, I'm not fighting Mexicans when he fought um, Angulo. When he fought Pedro, he didn't, he didn't have that. He didn't think, oh, I don't want to fight Mexicans then. When he fought the much smaller, Josecito Lopez, who had to come up two weight classes. Yes, two weight classes. To fight Canelo, there was no, oh, I don't fight Mexicans then. When he fought a washed up that nobody even cared about fighting anymore, Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., when he fought him, Julio Cesar Chavez's father didn't even want to watch that fight. And when they fought together, he didn't say anything about, oh, I don't fight my countrymen, I don't fight Mexicans. But all of a sudden, now that there's some real competitive Mexican fighters in his divisions, in 168, you got um, David Benavidez. And in 175, you have Sudo Ramirez, which are the two weight classes that Canelo has been campaigning in lately. When you have those two guys staring at the other side of the ring, Canelo all of a sudden now says he doesn't want to fight Mexicans. See, that's why it's garbage. And I'm glad they announced that fight that's going to happen November 19th between the two best fighters in the sport today and the two best fighters of the decade, Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence. They made it their business to fight one another because that's what it's about. It's about supremacy. It's about seeing who's number one. It's not about, oh, he's my countryman and I'm going to... He uses whatever excuse he can. How many times are y'all going to fall and defend these fall for these excuses and defend them. Oh, he tells Andre, oh, you're a horrible fighter, horrible fighter. Bay day, you want bay day, I know that. Like, he he does that, making an excuse. He says, who you fight? He told Andre, who did you fight? You fight nobody. Oh, yeah, that's funny, because last time I checked, Avini Yildrum fought nobody. He fought nobody. Who else? You know what I'm saying? Rocky Fielding. For nobody. Come on. How many times are you going to do this, Canelo? Like, this is why you Canelo fans don't understand. It's not, it's not a personal attack on Canelo. It's you can't say you're the best and your fans can't clamor over you and say you're the best when you're not taking on the best. This is what the best do. Terrence Crawford wanting to fight Earl Spence. Earl Spence wanting to fight Terrence Crawford. And they said they would do it eventually when they wipe out the whole division and that's what they did. They wiped out the whole division and they met up at the top to see who's going to be. Because whoever, whoever wins is number one. Whoever loses is number two. Period. Period. But they're still the two best in the sport regardless. So, great news for us fight fans. Big, two big fights announced. Uh, one huge fight for the UK. One huge fight for the USA and boxing in general. So, that's great news. 2022 continues to be one of the best, if not the best, year in boxing ever. That first half gave us some sensational fights. It gave us some historic fights. And now the second half is not, not uh, losing any steam neither. It's given us just as much to, to root for and clamor over and be excited about as fight fans. And that's all we want, Canelo and Canelo fans. All we want is the, we want to be, we love this sport. We want the best to fight the best. It ain't about, you know, don't put me, don't involve me in none of that. You know, none of those, those race wars that other pages be having. I'm not involved in none of that. My page is solely about sports, boxing, and promoting the best versus the best and exposing the lies 
that are being told. And that's all that my page is about. So that's why I go hard at Canelo because he says he's the best. People call him the best. Eddie Hearn lying to the public saying that he's the greatest fighter of all time. But meanwhile, he's not fighting the best fighters in his division while they're still young, active, and undefeated. So that's all I got to say. Excited about this fight coming up. And we'll, we will see who's going to be number one come November 19th, 2022. I'm Wise for Wise Words Media. Enjoy your weekend. I'll be back at y'all tomorrow with a pre-fight video. Peace.